And before getting into the webinar, I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Martin Hardy. He uh, finished his studies at Cégep uh, d'Alma in uh, computers and, and in informatics, and then he continued st his studies in uh, multimedia. He taught at Cégep uh, uh, de Livy from 2007 to 2021, and having also uh, worked at the Minister of Education at higher, uh, at higher Education as a digital advisor for education in 2018-2019. Then he was a, a school counselor, a guidance counselor at, at his uh, institution. He teaches computers uh, at uh, college at Cégep. He is uh, a very self-taught. He learned a lot of uh, uh, new uh, software and pedagogy and technology are become have become his main tools and his profile is very rich in experience. And as Martin was saying, I have a lot of experience that make me the teacher that I am today. So have a great webinar, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, that was very good. Thank you, I'm gonna share my screen now. It's uh, like when I was working from home at the pandemic, when I'm using my uh, Surface uh, now, my tablet. Uh, so it was, uh, I am a uh, prof at Cégep Piano now. I always try to find uh, new strategies. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, but uh, with uh, Teams, it was uh, it's like I'm using Moodle, which I love to use, uh, but the students, uh, and computer science are a bit lazy, so we use the laziness to uh, find uh, more efficient, effective techniques. I was very lucky with my students uh, in uh, uh, um, office technology and uh, admin technology, they like technology, of course, and it was a bit more difficult with my computer guys, uh, students, uh, they, and uh, so the inherent laziness or the kind of student that we have they like everything beyond the screen they want everything to be in one place so how can i make it so that we can have tools that exist uh, on the market teams is a very much uh, used uh, piece of software so um as all of you you need to take notes you need uh, organizing uh, your work uh, for uh, teamwork uh, classroom work etc so teams with sharepoint uh, is uh, a good combination. So the presentation that I'm going to give today, we're going to talk about the why. I'm going to get into Teams and into SharePoint, but through all of that, I uh, also um, had some issues, if you will. I'm going to try and give you some uh, strategies to make things easier. There's no magic bullet. Some people use other tools, but uh, this is uh, very humbly what... Uh, I use. So Teams, SharePoint, Teamail, which organizes all of it, and Planner for team uh, projects. So I'm going to start with Teams. So why Teams? Well, uh, we said it earlier, to centralize. We want the students to communicate, to try and communicate with uh, within their group, with the teachers, Limeo, everyone knows what that is, but they're limited sometimes because we'd like to do some screen captures uh, this is the mistake uh, that we found here and there and this is something that we should and so with screen captures you have to um, it's a bit more complicated than uh, in teams it's much easier so we use it to uh, send screenshots directly to the students and uh, uh, for the students will often say well you use a lot of different systems well yes But it'll be a bit hidden. Uh, like a Moodle, everything will be on the same platform. So centralization, communication. There's also, I'm not a Microsoft guy specifically, but what's good about Microsoft is the notion of accessibility for uh, people with visual challenges, for example, and their functionalities in Teams and Office 365. And uh, if not, well, why not Teams? Well, because uh, we create the Teams course. Uh, you can see that there's uh, some files, documents in SharePoint that uh, is automatically created when you have a Teams uh, group or uh, with a classroom template where we have uh, some uh, read-only files. That's really practical if you don't want them to be modified. 
at Y Teams. Well, once again, the classroom notes and uh, they are using Teams already probably, but I don't know if you know, but there's a website, a hidden website behind Teams, a SharePoint, and it's hidden uh, behind the, the front page. And you see a few uh, uh, strange things when you click on it, but that can be modified. You can create a protected website with all our classroom notes. I'm going to present that later on. And as well, in Teams, you have the notion of homework, whether it be an exam or um, team or work or homework. I can have a homework file with the files in it. And there's a, it's not as obvious, but Moodle has a, a criteria a, a table also where you want to evaluate uh, certain elements. So for all of that, I chose Teams with SharePoint. And so I begin with Teams. So in Teams, it could look like this. Um, when I usually we have chats and send messages back and forth, but do you know that we can do a kind of like a um, announcement, if you will, or um, a poster where I can really talk about specific things. I use a general channel to uh, put up my mess lesson plans and you can say, well, today guys, we're going to cover this and that aspect. And this is the lesson plan. This is when the break is going to happen. And, we will do this and that exercise. But I do that in the main channel. That way the students have that uh, directly uh, on their screen and they see the uh, lesson plan directly. So I have to, to I do a Word document, a, a template. I don't have to redo it every time. All the 15 weeks are there. We meet the students twice a week because they're four or six hour classes sometimes. So it's 30 classes. So I put that into a Word document with different uh, subtitles here. You can see uh, in course 19, for example, it's a level one. I do my, uh, 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 my, my sorting, my, uh, I, I put it all together on words. I just copy paste and it does all the formatting for me. I don't have to do anything. I just copy paste and uh, make sure the uh, links uh, are there for the classroom notes. I test them and then I, copy paste and to avoid contaminating, um, it's funny to say contaminate, but to contaminate a channel. So everybody asks questions about one thing in the channel. I disactivate the comments on that channel. So the students say, well, when did we see this and that? Well, go see week three in your general channel, all the lesson plans uh, that were there since week one. So um, exam, uh, on the exam on uh, week seven, we'll cover the first six weeks of six lesson plans. So uh, in Teams, you can also do uh, search. So if there's a keyword and the uh, student doesn't know which well, week uh, each subject is, he can uh, do search and it will give him the week that we covered that subject. Uh, so if you, we can disactivate comments. Uh, the general channel is a, uh, for the lesson plans. I put the links towards the pages. If he doesn't want to go and click uh, around everywhere in the interface of Teams, well, the links to the classroom notes are there. So if he wants to, the student can just consult his lesson plan and everything is there. So that's uh, for that. And um, so the channels, I create many, uh, do not contaminate uh, the general channel. with only lesson plans, for example, but uh, discussions, general discussions, that's if we want to talk about all kinds of things. It's a bit like in an office, sometimes we'll talk about uh, the cocktail hour on Friday. We don't want to mix all those discussions. So I leave that open to general discussion for uh, just general uh, questions and discussions that is there. So there's A to M. These are private channels for the different teams. When I want to put the uh, students into teams, I work with, the, I uh, put them into each of these categories. If you, uh, oh, we are on Discord, we're already on Messenger. I said, no, no, we have to use these tools. Everybody has to use the same tools. I'm the boss. You work on this. I want to see the discussions. And if things don't go well, that's where I will go and see uh, why the uh, teamwork didn't, uh, didn't go so well. So uh, if things don't, uh, if things go south, for example. So there are team channels. I have an evaluation channel as well. If I want to, uh, certain files, for example, are missing or there was a bug or something, or I didn't explain certain things, I will use an evaluation channel where I will uh, cover certain aspects, certain things. Don't forget uh, about this or that point, for example. 
and there is a, a general uh, strategy, as Susan Kubiak channel, or for uh, sharing ideas and strategies. So I tell the students, if you find any tricks or any ideas or anything, put them there. We can all share resources, and it's a good positive reinforcement and creates a great dynamic. The team, team channels, we talked about that. And so the teams, uh, the teams on the front page, if you see, we have the class notebook. So that uh, of two points, point one, point two. Some will prefer using OneNote. So OneNote uh, allows us also to uh, do a nice uh, setup, a nice layout, but uh, the layout isn't that great. I prefer doing the layout um, web interface, so I teach that anyway. So front page, when you are in the team that represents your class, uh, on point one, first uh, page, that's the SharePoint. So it's not presented that way in the beginning. You have to manipulate uh, and play with it a bit, but uh, you, can, you can see the channel, the uh, arrow there, front page, the S for SharePoint. So, which is a bit uh, difficult in Teams because I don't want the students to go around too much. They want everything all on one platform, on one page. So yes, uh, Teams has followed the same notion as included everything on one page. I feel a bit claustrophobic, but when there's a web page that is in Teams, Sometimes you don't see it as well. So I encourage them to, uh, this page here comes from the SharePoint app. When you go on office.com, you can see all the tools online, whether it be Teams, whether it be Word or et cetera. But there's also a tool or an app called SharePoint. SharePoint that we can open from a uh, browser. That's what I encourage them to do. So I add this button here. These are buttons that I added with some icons. So to uh, ask for a meeting with me, open this site in a new window. That's the little home there. So if you want to see your notes, uh, do control click on that and it'll open your classroom notes separately. So as a teacher, you will go on SharePoint on office.com. In SharePoint, you will find your classroom notes. You copy uh, the address, the link and you create a bu uh, button there. Uh, can, can you demonstrate that? Of course. Okay, so I will go and get my notes. I'm gonna open Teams. And I had prepared this in advance, there we go. And you are right, Nicole, it's better when you do it at the same time as you're teaching it. So screen number two, share, there you go. So I'm in Teams now, and you can create uh, all the classes you like. It's uh, usually prepared for you. So if I go into interface, uh, web interface, uh, we. 11, we've got a little example here, course 21. If I see expand here, I've got the links towards the classroom notes. And sometimes I will uh, join some files there. If you wanna put them in the lesson plan, that's fine. I put them in the classroom notes. And so front page, uh, if I go there, um, uh, let's I'll go see in a, another class, programming. A little technical issue I have in my files here. I don't know if it's because it's I'm sharing the screen, but uh, it's a bit strange. But here I have a tab with my classroom notes, with my class notes, and so it's the same thing here. Go into Web One. If I go here, and uh, that's what I will see. Um, in Teams, so if I click here, I don't know why it won't let me, but here you would usually see this page. So on this page, I created different modules. So by default, it's uh, just a opening page, a front page, but here, what I do is I put everything in one place so the student doesn't have to look around, for example, the school calendar, 
what week we're at, week 11, where it is in the calendar, a department, the link to the website for the department, take a meeting with me, ask for a meeting with me. That's not the notion, but that could be interesting. What is it called? Uh, bookings. So bookings to book meetings. So if you want to ask for a meeting, you can just click on that. And you can see the next available appointment is Friday, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30. So that's the another app that you have access to in office.com. You can configure it so that it fits with your schedule. The students will see that. Just click. It opens it in their agenda, uh, adds it to your calendar. Their calendar sends reminders. It's great. So uh, all the functions you want to add, you can add them here. The student doesn't have to look around everywhere. Everything's in one place. So you are on SharePoint. Uh, yes, you can see there it's on SharePoint. Exactly. And also what I was talking about earlier, um, the control click, uh, they will see that in Teams. So Teams is connected to everything. It's also as a web navigator. So if you want to exit the SharePoint to, from Teams, control click so you can open the SharePoint in a navigator window. There's a question related to that. Can we connect a SharePoint that's already created with a new uh, Teams, uh, uh, with a new Teams group? Can you connect something that already exists? So I, I, that was a bit of a problem for me. I, I didn't know how to do it. I found ways, thanks to TBO, to do. So uh, TBO are, uh, is a way to do it. You can create a Teams group. You can go and get the SharePoint that was there in uh, X team, and for example, and copy it elsewhere. Because if not, it's very difficult. So just to show you here, um, when you are in SharePoint, I can go click on the uh, parameters there. And if the SharePoint opens in Teams, you don't have this bar that is essential. Why? Because what's great in SharePoint is you can do a search by keyword and the search will share, will search all the PowerPoints and the web content and the images, an image that contains text. Usually the text is quoted as an image, but he can search that as well. So if I go into this uh, parameter uh, cog here, there's the contents of the site. And in the site contents, I have all my class files. I have all my uh, work that is there. Um, site pages, one per module. Let's see, home page that is there. The uh, home page. So, yes, you can work with that to uh, keep certain pages. I would be careful with this one because it's if you. If we use the same name, home.aspx, you can go and recoup that from and use it from one class to another. Uh, but uh, I hope that answers your question. Nicole? Thank you. I can go back here with this little icon. So that's interesting because Timeo. I was talking to them uh, for constructive criticism. And uh, sometimes when you're on Teams, you have the little Teamio tab that proposed quick help guides. But I will give you a link. There's a lot of details there. It's too bad you don't find them all in the quick notes. But I had an answer to saying, well, go directly onto our website and support. And you have a lot of uh, videos there that are a great resource. So I'm going to put. Uh, the link to them up in the chat. So I'm just going to we'll see if in Teams we were finished. Uh, in the general tab, I'm going to go into homework. So homework, um, I have one here that is ongoing, TP Qua, Sit Web Responsive. So if I click on this, I'm thinking out loud here because I don't want to show the uh, results. So um, if I do this, we can create homework. I will simulate the student view. So if I'm a student, what I will see. 
So he will see this, the uh, date when it is due, when um, it uh, has to be handed in. And I had a bit of a bug here. I have to maybe start the Teams uh, group again, but the bug is that uh, even if I uh, connect files, uh, uh, the students couldn't uh, download the files. So I, uh, go, I say go into the evaluation channel, the uh, files are there. Usually you can attach them, but the number of possible points. The, this is the uh, correction table. If I click on it, I can put it up here on full screen. So there's many columns here for criteria for evaluation. It's a bit difficult to see in a small screen, so I encourage you to put it up uh, on a full screen, but I can see here the different uh, parts that I want to correct which is a website to, so respecting the models, does the, uh, teacher, does the student respect the wireframes? And so uh, if I, uh, I click and it uh, can correct and it gives a total number of points and I can add comments here underneath. So it's not perfect. Uh, in Moodle, there's also a good tool that does this as well. What's not as good here is that when you try to write, there's not a lot of space here. And sometimes when I want to click uh, satisfactory for this criteria. Um, teams, what it will do is it will uh, uh, push it up to the top. So I have to go down uh, constantly, but it's, it's a good tool, but you can improve a few things on it. And uh, as I'm going to use Teams, I use this tool because we want everything in one place, uh, of course. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. So everything is here. We have the channels. Uh, if I want to class notebook, so for um, class notes, share points, or this to see what we have with Moodle as far as content. So I just talked about that, the uh, correction the tables. We can see them here. Uh, uh, you see that I've uh, uh, joined two files. So there's a the correction table there you can consult, and there's you can export this table uh, from one year to the next. You can see it's a bit small there, but you can download the table, uh, evaluation table, uh, as the data and recoup it and use it again. I can also in Teams create homework based on a precedent uh, uh, homework. Uh, so uh, I can uh, recreate the files, the columns with uh, all throughout this table. It could be interesting. So uh, they, uh, All right, continue SharePoint, SharePoint for class notes. And I will point here, I think I can zoom in here. Control uh, uh, with the mice, uh, with the mouse wheel, so you can zoom in, I can use this the uh, start page with a lot of uh, different modules and I can add some files as well. Something I hadn't showed you in my SharePoint, I'm gonna go check that and open up my notes uh, here. So when you do homework, um, everything uh, to support the students, uh, technical support, uh, meetings, uh, bookings, uh, uh, school calendar. We can uh, have a calendar here when you do a Teams. You can uh, have a, it'll make an Outlook group where there's a calendar. So if they're configured, you will see the dates here. And say, Jeff, we often have uh, some uh, schedule issues no classes uh, it's a science tempest that day so all the classes get pushed over to the next day so that's where i put uh uh be careful the class you had here is moved to the 19th of april could be course 23 from 10 to um, noon for example so it keeps everybody on the same page and um, also for the exams uh, so there's f uh, that's the french test so there's uh classes uh postponed that day and so then they can see all the exams there on the calendar. So all the uh, class support files, you can put them in SharePoint. So they have them everywhere. There's no excuse to say I haven't found them. They're all in one place. 
go to your homepage and they're all there. Support files and teams. There's also in the files there. Uh, I can go back here and it was, if I go into teams, uh, I think it was the web uh, interface, the general channel. There's also the different files. So when it's a teams, a group in the classroom, you, you can see uh, there's a file called class support. So there seems to be some technical. Oh, okay. It just popped. Uh, uh, so class support uh, files. You can see all the different files, all the different files that I provide. And you can see, I talk about this later, but so there's a codification here because my the students, they don't have uh, uh, that many organization skills sometimes, but then I code things, the class code, the module 01, the uh, number of the activity 00 is the theoretic the presentation of the class, then there's the exercises, you can see with the coding here, the advantages, I don't need to create sub files, everything will be there, they just have to choose uh, what they need to download. So a coding system uh, can be helpful. So the class support, this is uh, an automatic uh, file. Uh, so you can synchronize all of this. So I'm gonna open it up here. You can synchronize this with your Windows uh, browser, uh, the Windows Explorer, sorry. So if you synchronize that, you can see them here. So uh, class support for my prog three advanced programming. When I click on that, I have exactly all the files. What's interesting for the student is if you synchronize with the uh, with this explorer, everything is uh, it's not directly in your computer. It's synchronized with the cloud, but he'll be able to get a copy directly there if he wants to. It's a very easy, straightforward way of doing this. So I put my class supports here, web interface programming. And if you go into web interface, I will, whether you be anywhere and, and you are in SharePoint files, three dot, the three dots, you can just synchronize and it will add it into your uh, Windows Explorer. So there's that. There's also, you can see here, I was talking about the solutions that I created a special library that didn't exist elsewhere. We can do that in SharePoint if you want to do uh, another library. I uh, offer separate solutions. I don't want it to be too easy. I want them to do their exercises. So the students, when they have to search, they do their exercises and they will go uh, find the solutions as needed. So, uh, well, and here I'm going to the SharePoint. So I created this new library for documents that uh, created here in this little cog uh, here for parameters. I can create a new library. I put solutions here. But we saw in my Explorer file, Explorer, it is not synchronized in library. For, so the student can also do this if he wants to the three dots here and a list of uh, SharePoint documents. You can see here, you can sync and I'm doing a live demo. I hope it works. It worked, yes. So I have my two classroom support files. And so uh, uh, all solutions and exercises, everything is online. So if the student wants a copy, he just right clicks and he will uh, download. Maxim Dancourt was asking the question. I think I know the answer, but I'd like you to answer that. What Can you import files and put them in a SharePoint? Or it, it, it seems, or it will do a double deposit. Can you import? Uh, files from a SharePoint via Teams? Yes. Well, I don't know if I'm answering correctly, but those files uh, that are, if they're on Teams or if they're on Teams, or if they were in Classroom Support, for example, as, as, as soon as I have them here, I can go into my files here, such as Yarno, get a copy of my Classroom Notes, for example. I have my little codification here, I go in 05A. And then I, I want to share something new. I can make a copy and go put it in classroom support. Does that answer your question? Yes, he says my idea is to synchronize the SharePoint recurrently towards a Teams group. So recurrent, uh, meaning every time you have a class, 
you create a new teams group uh, for next fall, for example, I can, yes, copy paste quite simply my content. But if you just do a copy of your teams, because there's a way to create a teams group and, uh, and like in Moodle, when you create a new one, you could just say, do a copy of the old one and everything will come with it. So all the files, everything, we will copy them as well. So Teams has the same thing. And uh, uh, Maxim says, yes, it's true. Thank you, Martin. And I have a slide uh, on that. So when I have a SharePoint like that, what I propose is create a separate module. So if um, you don't want to offer the module right away, you don't want the students to go into it right away, I just need to take it out of the navigation there. There's a way to archive it so that if they have the link to go consult uh, module four, for example, that we haven't seen yet. So the uh, research, the search, you can see here, I can do my control uh, with my mouse wheel. So in my SharePoint, uh, and it shouldn't be on Teams because I don't have that bar here. If I do a grid, a, a search, I do a, a, a web layout, and uh, you can see, oh, I found the keyword in PowerPoint, a document that you put uh, into the class content in a zip file. I also found it in a SharePoint page, and it found them as well in an image, a screen capture. It can read the text that is part of the screen capture. So, uh, so it's really great. So you can. That's why I. Uh, used it this way. So there's a bit of a reminder here on the bottom. I didn't talk about that yet, but it's a reminder for myself. If you create a team copy, I can do team copies. We have to see how to, what I advise to do with teams for, you'll have less work to do for adaptation later on for adapting things is to not create a copy of your teams because sometimes there are things that don't get carried uh, uh, well into SharePoint. So what I propose to do is to create, to empty the, uh, to link that with a new group, the list of students to link that with a new group. There's an option with Teamio to do that. So that way you pick all the students out, new students come in, you erase the list of students and you put in new students and everything is functional. So uh, the documentation, pr presentation, the document uh, was uh, the document shared is the presentation will be shared following the webinar, but I'm going to put the link uh, in the chat. Great. So there's the link there. Uh, so the link there is an article that I wrote in published with the team where I present what you see here. So there you go, SharePoint. Uh, yes, it's SharePoint. What's great is that you can integrate directly documents, for example, a PowerPoint that is really a, something you can consult live in your page, a Word document, I have a, a, an example of a Word document, a PowerPoint document. So I do a bit of a demo. My uh, Teams is there. I come back to my, my start page and uh, uh, what you can see here. Uh, module four, when I click on that, that's just another page that I created. So when the students click on that, module four, you can see the PowerPoint here. What I, it's great is I can manipulate it directly. He doesn't have to download it. He can just manipulate it, click it. And in the animation, if you've done animation in uh, these, uh, when you click on them, they work very well. But if, be careful if you navigate here and, there are anim and there's animation, it'll go to the next slide. So in clicking directly onto the PowerPoint, it works. If you need more space, you can do a full screen. And if you want to as well, there's a way to put your web content to full screen with F11. I, I'm not going to do that because it might uh, affect things, but you can do that. So the course content like this, like the PowerPoint. So I put the PowerPoints when it's in formation that is when I want to train you on this or that today. What's important is I have uh, screen caps. 
screen captures, copy paste to save this will be important. It's important to retain all this information, but if you missed the class, all the details are here. And these are just uh, spotlights, highlights, things that I add uh, afterwards. And what's great in SharePoint is if I do a screen capture, uh, I, there's free ones, but you can buy a screen capture uh, software with annotation. I can capture my screen, copy, and I just need to paste. I don't need to save or uh, uh, paste or anything, just copy paste. So if I go to modify here, modify the page, it will allow us to see how these pages work. I could do a new section, for example, here, and I can choose how many columns if I want to do side by side. And if I do some formatting here with this new section, I can choose uh, what I want. Do I want text? Do I want the code? It's programming. Do I want a library of documents, for example? And uh, different tabs, uh, images, all these different things. You can integrate YouTube videos. And I was integrating a PowerPoint. But if I do a research called Nidzia, uh, uh, I will click on that and put my uh, PowerPoint up there. And you can be uh, consulting it directly. So I do that. I, even for images, I put text. So in the text here, you have... Uh, some formatting uh, that's very good uh, for uh, subtitles. And so you can see subsections. I use the different uh, fonts here. And the screen cap, uh, screen capture, uh, I'm going to do one. There we go. That's my desk uh, top right now. I use Snagit. That's my desktop. But if I do copy, and uh, I just have to put it here and paste. I don't need to save that screen cap uh, anywhere. Screen capture, just copy paste. So that uh, uh, it goes really quickly. You can put that together really fast and you can play with it, move it around. Uh, you can move it from one uh, frame to another, just drag and drop. So I'm just going to erase this. Uh, uh, there you go for my students. Uh, so that's for the SharePoint. If I go back here, snag it, we'll take that out. There you go. So you can integrate all kinds of things in SharePoint. And uh, I've also integrated sometimes there's an animation that I uh, did some animation here in PowerPoint. Uh, I did uh, uh, a video that I could integrate uh, and saying this is important. So they may not launch the PowerPoint in slide mode to see the animation, but from PowerPoint, you can export as video, and uh, you can uh, export a video, and you can integrate that into the SharePoint. The uh, files uh, exercises, fichier uh, d'exercice. So when I have some homework, there's coding there for the different exercises that we do. I don't want to publish, so I'm okay. So here there's the PowerPoint content. There's details here. I don't know if there were any exercises here, but I'm trying to go back to what we were covering this week. Uh, go back to home page. I created some links to make things easier for them. So this week we see advanced formatting so i show the module here and there's a visual representation they see grid here i uh, did some vertical navigation you can copy paste here copy the link to go directly on this uh, subject i create a button and it will be the link that i will uh, paste into the button for example i did it here for grid if i click on it we get here, I have the PowerPoint that I can navigate through and some great uh, classroom notes from my College of Passois. And then I do some screen captures to say this is really important. And then some tricks and strategies. You can change the color of the background to attract attention, for example. And uh, coding uh, strategies when it's an exercise, this is 
a icon that I put, a, a visual representation. This is module five, part three, exercise one. And I have uh, here, these are classroom support files, uh, information. So I have filters here. You can, in SharePoint, go and modify all the files. You can say only show the files that start with 05A-0503, uh, for example. So here, uh, module 5.3. So you can say um, filter out all the files that start with 05A, 05 only. So they can show all of them if they want to. They're there, uh, all documents, for example. That's where they would see. It's uh, a bit difficult to navigate through sometimes, so I filtered that and make it easier for them. So in your SharePoint, for example, associated with a Teams group. So can you create a SharePoint without associating to a Teams group? Uh, uh, um, so that's a uh, CEGEP uh, computer department. I have to do that. I have a SharePoint that is created automatically, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, your computer department, your uh, IT will say yes, but that's uh, the answer. You can do a SharePoint separately, but you have to ask your IT for that. So, sorry. Um, the um, filters, uh, uh, I suggest a coding system, uh, just like I did. You don't have to always have uh, subheadings. Uh, it makes things easier with the coding system, makes it more uh, interesting, more easy to use. So uh, the uh, library I was talking about, the synchronization here, it's when you click on sync, uh, when I sync with uh, Explorer and uh, Depending on where you are and SharePoint, it synchronizes with your computer. It could be great to say, okay, I don't want to give these exercises right away to my students. I'm going to uh, take them out, and when it'll be the time, I will go to my OneDrive, do a copy paste to give them access. So you don't have to touch anything, just copy paste files. It works great. So I continue. Uh, so uh, SharePoint, I had a demonstration, uh, but you're a bit ahead of me, and that's fine. We did a quick tour of SharePoint, what it could look like. And if I have some time left over, we can uh, go back on that. So I have some spotlights too on interesting things here, important aspects of SharePoint. You have to open SharePoint separate from Teams, and then you've got uh, the uh, settings there, the parameters, content of the site, and uh, these are the pages that I was using to create new pages. You can publish them or leave them uh, as a draft. and we can uh, also, in creation mode of SharePoint, you can new page or uh, document library. That's how I have my uh, solution documents. I created a uh, 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 file trees that doesn't exist in Teams. We can create them as much as we want. So SharePoint, the uh, home page, I talked about that earlier. So uh, navigation bar here, it's a component you can see in creation mode. In, in, uh, capable of adding images, media, uh, documents, libraries of documents. You can also have this great uh, navigation. So what I advise is to create your uh, pages with a uh, nice layout and that uh, looks like this. So for example, HTML and CSS, I put coding language here. So it's like the uh, uh, on the top of your home page and you your navigation uh, bar. So you connect the visual part of the page and we'll make it into a big button. So uh, the buttons, there's a lot of ways to present them. I uh, use uh, a uh, file uh, presentation. So uh, pretty cool. So uh, put the different elements here, the different, this component is there uh, by default, the calendar, but in Outlook, if you create a calendar associated with your teams, you can add different dates. I have a question uh, from Maxim. Can we verify if it's not part of the subject of the presentation. You can talk about it, but can we publish an ad or a publication in Teams to remind people of uh, coming events or dates or, uh, well, Maxim, what I would propose is to create homework and in the homework you can plan, for example, I'll go here. I will go back into Devoir, homework. And when it's for exams or, uh, projects and do create 
creating from an existing homework. And then I can go in another class. I have two separate groups, for example. I'm in the web, web one. Next, in web one, I created all these projects, TP4. I can base it on TP3. I reuse the same uh, homework, I assign the same homework again. And for the dates, uh, so what is the closing date? I like uh, putting all of that information. So if I have a closing date, I can modify it. You can activate that. So I am planning it to appear on the 15th, will be published on the 15th of April. And so after my class, it's a three hour class. I would like towards the end, it would appear automatically, I say 10 o'clock. And then I activate everything. So it's, it's Monday that it will appear. I give them two weeks, let's say the 29th of April, midnight. And so they can uh, work uh, late into the night. And then uh, in our department, uh, we accept uh, the work until three days later, but there will be a 10% penalty per day. So we could say, well, it was for the 29th plus one, two, three until the second. So they, after that date, you will not be able to submit the work. If it is submitted uh, between the uh, end date and the uh, grace, three day grace period, will. Uh, uh, it will uh, subtract the marks, but and, and will not publish until the uh, specific date. If I published earlier uh, the, the homework, I program a reminder to not have to think about doing it again at a certain date. Uh, public, no, I don't think you can do that. So create a message that will appear in the channel. I haven't seen the option yet. Maybe somebody else knows the answer, but I don't think you can do that. Thank you. So we can write TMEO. Maybe they have some great ideas. They can add some things like that. I don't know if they can do that for us. But with TMEO, we can create team channels and say, listen, even the students and three uh, uh, person teams can manage that and create team channels. And maybe something in the future that like TMEO can uh, think about doing. So yeah. So uh, my findings around these methods instead of Moodle, because we don't want to have Moodle plus Teams plus, uh, we want everything in the same place. So the advantage is research, the search uh, works really well. The search, uh, as you can see, you can search through the images. I have colleagues that don't do Teams, don't do their, don't do their lesson plans in Teams. They put everything on SharePoint, but they have certain of them have chosen SharePoint because they can search images, which is great. Everything is there. Uh, accessibility as well uh, for visually challenged. For example, there's lots of functionalities in Office to increase the size of the text or to read the text for uh, the Celestic students, for example. So there's a lot of ways to have access to the different files. You can go to Teams files. I can synchronize with my team with my Explorer. I can. Um, Yes, we can have uh, the class notes that are separate. I like taking a lot of teams. So I propose to the students do a favorites bar, do a, a file for class notes, and you can have them all in uh, one place available. So also, there's another advantage, and uh, the fact that putting together a SharePoint page can be pretty fast. Let me do screen capture, copy, paste. It's done. So if I copy, paste, it's done, but uh, we... It's not the way we want always, but uh, it might be something you have to play around with, but it uh, requires a disadvantage. It requires a lot of organization, different codings. How can I uh, uh, do my different layouts, different modules? You have to have some organization. Uh, uh, you have to erase a quote to uh, uh, always register a new one. So that was the easiest way to find things, a way to keep my SharePoint without losing images. Because when you copy a team, the SharePoint uh, could, uh, the images that you integrate into the page point to the preceding class. So the students don't have access to the preceding class, so the images will be broken for them. So broken links. So the way I found to do it is I erase the old group and put in the new group with Timeo. What's 
the difficult is the old group doesn't have access to the class notes, but the solutions that I found was uh, is to uh, have an export of these files. So those classroom notes, I can in my files. Uh, <clears throat> I can download them and convert them into PDF. So I go to the chat. Uh, there's a discussion where Chloe says, have a conversation that it's not possible in publication into a channel. It's in the chat. I see how to do it in a conversation, but it doesn't seem possible for publishing in a channel. Is there another way? Somebody for the somebody answered it for the previous question. Okay, uh, so I uh, was just going over what you said. No, but so but so no, it wouldn't be possible. Okay, thank you. So the uh, the site, the SharePoint uh, site, opens in Teams by default. That's a disadvantage, but you can get around that. You can have a link towards the SharePoint site and uh, right control click, right that they should control click and open it in a different page. So you can share what people can see the SharePoint and from the home page, but just in case. Yes, you want me to present that? Yes. So if I go here, I had it. So the Microsoft's homepage, when you do office.com, you can go uh, here. And then you have our Teams uh, there. The, but here you can go to the planner. Uh, we might not have time, but uh, the SharePoint is here. And the careful because when you just created your team it takes some time to synchronize you might not see your website uh, directly your sharepoint site it will appear maybe the next day the next day might be a good time to test all of that so i have the web one that i have here so all the all the sites the sharepoint that are created automatically when you do a uh, teams and if i click on it uh, then it's the same thing so we were seeing that earlier if i copy that and i uh, do a navigation bar and I uh, open the SharePoint site in a new window, do control click. That's the address to uh, connect to. I don't, don't think we have time to talk about Planner. It's four minutes out. So I know that you talk about it in your articles. So people can uh, read uh, uh, all of that. I thought it was very interesting thank you very much are there people who would like to ask a question if so you can raise your hand so i have a slide here that uh, so that images don't break in the sharepoint i create a new team a new team with the option uh, uh, related to an existing teams so then i can replace my teams here a few uh, more details. I have the links uh, towards the document. It's the YouTube that Timio has produced. Very interesting. So, dear participants, you will receive the link to the document, the presentation, and the articles. In the chat, I will also have a link to some Timio information and resources. So I hope uh, this was interesting and enriching for you. So it was very enriching and very interesting, Mathe. We hope uh, we have the opportunity to do this again. And so thank you, everybody. And we will see you soon. And thank you, Mathe, for your great presentation. And uh, everybody is congratulating Mathe. I'm not the only one. So, yes, uh, thank you.